Subi. Thank you for uh, being a patron, Subi. Uh, what are some good brands to buy 2200 LiPos from? I've been looking at the Ovonic, which has very low C rating, as well as Z, which don't look promising. I'm going to guess if you're buying 2200 LiPos, are you doing ProSpec? ProSpec. Uh, because I think ProSpec uses 2200 LiPos. I believe. Am I right about that? Specs. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just coincidentally wanted a 22. Uh, come on. Yeah, 2200 or less. Um, what I would do, like, if I wanted to buy one today, I would go to fly533.com. Fly533.com. Uh, and batteries. They have a ProSpec battery here. Budget 6S 2200 ProSpec Legal Battery. $44.99. And you may say, well, it's only 45C. Uh, and that's true. But bear in mind that the bigger the battery is, the more amps you get for the same C rating. Because the formula for C rating is amp hours, so 2200 is 2.2 .2 amp hours, times C rating. So that is 99 amps. So by comparison, by comparison, if I were to take a 1100 milliamp hour 90C battery, that would be 1.1 amps times 90C, that's 99 amps. Now, if I were to hand you an 1100 milliamp hour 90C battery, you probably would say, ah, I'd rather have 100C or 120C, but 90C is okay. That would be my opinion. 90C, 80, 90C is about the minimum that I'd want for like a 5-inch drone. So you look at a 45C 2200 and you go, 45C? Oh, are you kidding me? That's not enough. But they have the same amp rating because the 2200 is a bigger pack. The bigger the battery, the lower the C rating can be, and the lower the C rating usually is. Okay, so... 2200 I would get the 533 budget battery just because I'm really confident that like 45 bucks I don't know is that a good price for that battery I don't know I haven't cross shopped any 2200s but like I would be confident that 533 and Evan Turner that this is a like decent battery for the money even if it's not necessarily the cheapest and I you know I think that's probably just because I have fit trust in Evan and trust in his company uh, until he betrays that trust. And then I'll burn him. I'll burn him to the ground. No. <laughs> I, drove, I dove my quad into a pond, and after drying for three days, it runs fine, but the OSD displays low-voltage land now. Yeah, your voltage sense circuit got, got damaged in the pond. There isn't really a great way around this. Um, I will say that... If you have an ESC that does ESC telemetry, you can try this, and you may not, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the ports tab, and you're going to look and see if you have ESC sensor input for any of your UARTs. And if you do, that's good. If you don't, you're going to go look up your ESC. Uh, here. You're going to go look up your ESC. And you're going to look at the pinout of your ESC. And what you want to look at is you want to see if the ESC has a telemetry wire. Do you see that this ESC, it says Tele right here. Tele, T-E-L-E. If you're on mobile, the screen's probably too small. You can't read it. This ESC has telemetry output. Ha! Ah. Maybe your ESC supports telemetry, and just you never set Betaflight up to do telemetry. But one way or another, you need to get telemetry from your ESC. And if your ESC doesn't have a telemetry output, and not all of them do, you're out of luck. You're done. But let's say that your ESC has telemetry. Well, in that case, you can go to the Power and Battery tab, and as your voltage meter source, normally you would have selected onboard ADC. That means your flight controller's onboard voltage sensor. Except yours is broken. 
because you crashed it in a lake. But if you have ESC telemetry, you can change this to ESC sensor, and you can get voltage from the ESC's voltage sensor, and if that works, that's the workaround. But if that doesn't work, you're screwed. How much of a difference does propeller pitch make? A big difference. Gee whiz. Big difference. Um, propeller pitch, the steeper the pitch of the propeller, the more thrust the propeller will make, assuming the right conditions are met. In general, you can, you can assume that if a quadcopter is hovering, it is probably going to be more efficient with a lower pitch prop. If you think about it, if I had a 90 degree, well, 90 degrees is, if I had almost a 90 degree pitch on my prop and the quadcopter is hovering, it's basically just slapping the air. It's not making much thrust. But if I pitch forward and begin flying forward, as I pitch forward and fly forward, the angle of attack on the prop changes. That air is now entering the prop from the top, and that, that higher pitch is now more effective at moving the air and generating thrust. So as a rule of thumb, the, f the more your pitch angle, and then by extrapolation, the faster your cruise speed, the more your pitch angle, the more you benefit from a higher pitch prop. And the, the lower your pitch angle, the more you benefit from a lower pitch prop. A higher pitch prop is going to generate more thrust and consume more amps. That's, that's a, another sort of rule of thumb. It's really difficult to optimize pitch without just trying different props and seeing how they perform. Because there's so many variables, like the, the prop's mechanical efficiency, the motor's mechanical efficiency, the pitch angle at which you fly, and so forth. There's, there's so many variables that it's really difficult to just say, here's the best pitch for you. Joe Turkal, thank you for a $5 super chat. What's the best antenna configuration for SkyZone O4X goggles with Immersion RC Rapid Fire? I run lollipops on my quads. Um, I would get like a TrueRC X Air or X2 Air antenna as my directional. It's going to be right hand polarized because that's probably what's on your quad. TrueRC X2 Air or X Air, going to give you a nice medium high gain uh you're gonna want a 45 degree adapter i believe to get this pointed the right way uh and it, i don't remember if it's i think it's rpsma but i'm not 100 percent sure about that uh, so make sure you buy the right connector uh right hand polarized and that's going to be your patch antenna and then uh what i like for does he have like a longer Omni, 5.8 gigahertz Omni, um, the Singularity, yeah. And then get something like the Singularity for your Omni, and the, the longer uh, antennas will stick up higher above your head and give you better coverage. So I would get one of the ones with the longer, just how long are you comfortable with it sticking up. That's a great choice. Marcine Samotia wants to know, I'm looking for the lightest whoop for filming on a concert hall. I was thinking to get a Cinelog 2.0 with a naked GoPro, but I was recommended to fly Flylens 85 with O3. So the first question you got to ask yourself is, is the video from the O3 going to satisfy your needs, or do you need the higher quality image of a GoPro? There's no question in my mind that a GoPro is going to produce a better image. That's just not up for debate. The O3 can produce good images, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get a crap image from both of them. So I'm not saying that you know anything that's too definitive, but some people out there would say, I have to have a GoPro. I need the better image quality, the better low light sensitivity, etc., all the things that a GoPro uh, brings. And if that's the case, then you're going to need something like a Cinelog 2.0, like a 2-inch Cinewhoop, with a naked GoPro. If the image quality from the O3 is good enough and your focus is on the smallest and lightest build possible, then a Flylens 85 with an O3 is a pretty good choice.